Hello and welcome, Dirty William here, back with another episode of Magic the Gathering Duels Origins. Last episode, we managed to fight off this guy, or uh, uh, a, one of these city guards, but we were thrown into prison for 10 years, which is not a good thing for, for a 13-year-old boy. Um, so, the warden, apparently, likes our... Uh, something i don't know this is like greek inspired stuff so i don't want to get too into that stuff but uh uh now we're going to be fighting this guy here so let's do that let's start the duel and we'll read while we're uh, waiting for a thing to look still standing for justice even while incarcerated you fight against the bullying and corruption around you hixus the prison's warden begins to admire your commitment to your convictions he starts your training in hieromancy magic based on order and justice because i'm a white aligned planeswalker so we'll continue Training drone. Oh, what are you going to show me now? A turn in magic is broken into several phases. At the start of your turn, you'll untap all your tapped cards and draw a card. Right, we knew that already. We've been doing that the last phases, episode. One before combat and one after. All right. Most spells can be cast only during one of your main phases. If a card in your hand is glowing, it means you can cast that. It means it's on fire. That land. Drop it like it's hot. And you could see that in my last episode, uh, where I would, instead of playing my creatures in my first main phase, I would attack first, and then all of the damage would be dealt in the combat phase. Then I would go into my second main phase, and I would cast my creatures then. Um, there are several different spell types in Magic the Gathering. Creatures, land, sorceries, instants, enchantments, artifacts, and planeswalkers. So you really need to learn when you can play those. Basically, instants are a card that you can play any time, even on your opponent's turn. We don't have access to any of those right now. I have not seen any of those in the deck yet. So we'll see, as we progress, if there are any that we can unlock or get from uh, booster packs. So continue. You've already seen the combat phase, when creatures attack and block. All damage dealt to creatures heals at the end of the turn. Right. After that, the next turn begins. And that's something for people that are into, like, Pokemon, I guess, and other trading card games like that, collectible card games. Um, the damage stays with them, I guess. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, might be like that, too. I don't know. My kid, I don't know very much about it, but my kids have played some things like that before. And you kind of have to keep note of, hey, Pikachu has, you know, another, like, five life remaining or something. In, in Magic... All the damage at the end of the turn is taken off the creatures, so you kind of start fresh. So there's no reason to, to keep track of that. We'll continue. This skill quest starts in your first main phase. A dark slick drake stands between your elvish warrior and victory. Mm. Find a way to attack and win this turn. Well, just from seeing the cards, I already know it's going to be pretty easy. So what we're going to do, this is my turn. I'm going to play an island. Apparently I've not played a... Uh, an island yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Unsummon, and I'm going to choose this creature. Unsummon will make that card go back to the opponent's hand. So we're going to uh, Unsummon the Dark Slick Drake. He has nothing to say about that. So my spell goes to the graveyard. Uh, his guy goes back to his hand. Now we attack. Confirm the attack. He takes the last two bit of damage that he needs to get out of my face and I win the game good job yay Casting the right I like it when AIs right tell me I get a get a good thing oh, I got some more fake monies and victory yeah this is a this is very much a strategy game folks so you really have to know what the cards do what might be in your opponent's hand etc etc And I'm assuming all that was preamble. We had to go through that just to get into this. So what are we going to do first? Well, we're going to play land, and we're going to play an elite vanguard, and that's going to be the end of our turn. So now it's going to be this guy's turn. Hixota? I can't remember what his name was. It doesn't matter what his name is. It does not even matter. Oh, he's playing some red stuff there. So he might have some burn spells, and what that means is our guys might get burned out, which means whenever I attack with something, he might play an instant to lightning strike, lightning bolt, something like that. So let's go ahead and play planes. And I'm, let's see, that costs three, this costs two. Uh, we're gonna continue. Go into our attack phase. Go into, into attack phase and attack. Confirm. I wanna see if his lonely mountain 
will blast this creature. Nope, he's taking the damage. So he goes to 18. So now, second main phase on our turn, we are going to play this Oresco Swift Claw, the Kitty Cat. And that's going to be the end of our turn. Now let's see if he does anything at the end step. Nope. He drew a card. Now he's playing red and white. Okay. Still have to watch out for burn, though. I'm not sure if it's in the deck, but he could basically one-shot one of our guys and kill it. So he's going to play a Glory Seeker, and that's fine by me. My turn. Let's play Planes. And let's go ahead and into our attack phase here and attack with all and see what happens. Confirm the attack. Forgot about that. Sorry. Okay, he's going to block. He can't cast anything here because his mana is tapped. But he's still going to take T damage from that. These guys are going to cancel each other out. They both die and go to the graveyard. Now, our second main phase. We are going to cast an Eagle of the Watch. So we have some flying damage. Now, on his turn, let's see if he has a burn spell. Although, it would be more intelligent to really hold off on that and wait to play that. Oh, he's got his own little uh, Eagle of the Watch guy. So, they both have flying, which means they can be blocked by one another. So if I attack with my Eagle the next turn, it's going to be blocked by this guy. Alright, my turn. Instant cards be cast at any time. After you cast an instant, it has an effect on the game. Okay. Uh, I don't feel like playing the skill quest right now. Thank you, though. Ah, creatures I control get a plus two, plus one until end of turn. Now, tactically, should I play that now? If I did, then on my attack, the Eagle of the Watch would become a 3-2. This would become a 3-2. He would more than likely block here, so my Eagle and his would die, and I'd only be getting three more damage out of the deal. So this is kind of a thing where I would like to wait, if at all possible. I would like to, to wait to play this until I get more creatures on the table. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into our combat phase. We're going to attack with all. Confirm the attack. <coughs> Excuse me. And he has chosen instead to block... Oh yeah, he, he did. They switched places. That's odd. So both of these guys are going to die. He still took two damage. And now we're going to... Uh, let's see. The only thing we can play is one of these three guys. And yes, this is the best one because it has three power. It's a 3-1 instead of the Glory Seekers, which is a 2-2. So we'll go ahead. This is an aggressive deck. We want to cast as many creatures as we can with the highest power we can and start plugging away at him. All right, his turn. He drew a mountain, or played a mountain, rather. Okay, he's got a 2-2. Again, that is very similar to the Glory Seeker, just with a different name. No abilities, just very vanilla. And, speak of the devil, he plays a Glory Seeker. So he's going to have two blockers to our two guys. Let's see, Eagle of the Watch. So this is the predicament that we're in right now. Do we go ahead and go through combat, knowing that he will block both of these guys and they will die, and then play an Eagle of the Watch next turn? I think that would be the best bet. I'm still keeping him off of his foot. I, this is an aggressive deck, and I want to keep attacking. So let us continue. We'll move into the combat phase. We'll attack with everything. Confirm the attack. So he only blocked one of my creatures, so this guy is still still going to be alive, and this guy is still going to be alive. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and plonk down our Eagle of the Watch. So we have a nice little flyer. That is the end of our turn. Beginning of his turn. Plays a mountain. He does not attack. Let's play a land. 
I'd really like to more get more creatures on the table before I burn this. This plus one, plus one to end of turn is pretty big and can make some combat math hard for him. And at this point, I'm only going to be buffing some two ones up to three two, and they will die from uh, block getting blocked by that. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's go into our attack phase. Attack with all. Confirm the attack. I do not want to cast this yet. Okay, he's going to trade this card for that one. My eagle does two damage to him. Both of these guys go to zero toughness and die because of state-based effect. And now we're going to dump both of these guys on the table. Both of our glory seekers. And try to set ourselves up to make this glorious charge an actual glorious charge. His turn draws... Well, he plays a planes... And he has nothing at all. Huh, but he has six untapped lands up there. That makes me a bit nervous. So here is what we could do this turn. We could play the Great Heart, which is a 2-4 creature. Or we could attack him, bump up our team, and give them all a plus one, plus one. So we'd be doing a 3, 6, 9 damage. Let's go for that and see what happens. If he has some burn or other type of spell, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to attack with all. We'll confirm the attack. And I'm going to cast Glorious Charge. So our creatures get a bit more beefy. Ah, here we go. Lightning Strike deals three damage to a target creature or player. So he's probably going to take out... Uh, I would probably take out this guy here, the eagle, honestly, because it's a flyer. Yep, that's what he's going to do. Still doing six damage to him, taking him down to four. All right. So that is the end of my turn. His side of the board is still clear. I still have two guys left. He draws another mountain and plays it. Second main phase, he plays another blocker, basically, at 2-2. Two, two. So are we going to draw another one of those pump spells? Yes, we did! So that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to continue into our combat phase. Attack with all. Confirm the attack. And cast a glorious charge. So we can still block one of these guys. He takes three from this guy, going to one. My Glory Seeker will kill off his Traveling Philosopher and still stay alive because it has one toughness left. All right, his turn. Plays land, he has one card in hand. And he ends his turn. Let's go ahead and play our planes. We will continue into our combat phase. We will attack with everything. Confirm the attack. Does he have burn in his hand? Nope, he does not. So he goes to minus one from that guy. He's going to go to minus three from my glory seeker. And that's the end of that. And I got fake monies. Awesome. All right, let's continue on. Four years under the guidance of Hyksus has shaped you into a powerful combat mage. Hyksus believes your natural talent for wielding magic belies something special about you. He suspects that, like his own mentor, you may be a planeswalker. All right, and now this uh, next guy here is going to be unlocked. But we'll have to wait for that until the next episode. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Dirty William reminding you to do the dirty work.